Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Operation Sand Dune. Uh, today, again, we're gonna. I'm continually thinking of different train pieces that I can be doing, uh, showing you guys, and I, I kind of came up with an idea uh, of something that that is quite extensively used in the desert. Um, in fact, some of them still today have not been found, and that is the mine and the mine field. Okay, so today, what I thought was uh, I could show you a really simple way of creating. Um, uh, minefields and creating them quickly uh, because you know some of you may want to make your own terrain but you don't want to spend hours and hours and hours creating it um, and certainly I know for me in, in recent weeks and months time is becoming far and far less available and so uh, I'm finding ways of, of quickly creating uh, terrain to kind of make the table look a little bit more um, awesome for want of a better word you may remember uh, some of the scattered terrain pieces that I did. All right, they were pretty quick, easy to do. Um, didn't take too much time, um, especially with the change in my method from using sand to using polyfiller. It will make it a lot quicker as well. So uh, that's what we're going to aim for today, um, building some quick minefields. Um, I'm going to be probably making three in total. Uh, I've got um, a couple on the go. So... Without further ado, let's waste no more time. Let's jump over to the workbench and we'll crack on with making some minefields. We'll see you in a sec. Okay guys, so at the workbench. Now, uh, some of the th quick things that you'll need uh, for making a minefield. A pair of plastic cutters, okay, or a pair of cutters, a hobby tool. Some super glue. Some sort of base. I've got a pre-made one. It's uh, plywood. It's about uh, three mil thick. Um, it measures six inches by five inches, but you can really do it whatever size you like. Okay, um, and you also need some polyfiller and just a, an old paintbrush. I use. Let me find it. I think I use this one. It's not very big. This is a half inch brush. Okay, but as you can see, it kind of sprays out at the end. All right, and I can use that to stipple. In fact, there's the rest of that that I've left on from another. Uh, adventure so oh and the final thing that we need is old sprues okay now I was looking at these one day and I saw that they have these kind of circular bits on them okay and I thought to myself well they look kind of useful they could they could be used for something and I'd then been thinking about minefields and I'd looked up some pictures of North African uh, minefields and I saw some with these sort of small round circle shapes. Um, that's what the mines kind of look like, some of them. So I thought, excellent. What if I were to chop these up, stick them on a base, we would get a minefield. So that's what I started to do. Um, I've got some already laid out. I'm just going to quickly super glue these down. Uh, you can put them in sort of random orders. That's the kind of cool thing about minefields. They don't have to be in any specific order because they, they weren't. Um, I will talk to you about cutting them in just a second. Let's just get these down first. Oh, there's a loose one. That's not the way I wanted it. And you know me and superglue, guys. You know me and superglue. Because it's now on my finger and it's now sticking to it and I can't get the bit off. Oh, life is horribly hard sometimes. Right, let's see if that sticks. Just add an, another drop over the top, actually. Just glue it in place. I tend to put a bit of glue and then just push it over this, you know, push the piece into the position over the glue that I want it. Finish some of these up. Now the plastic, the plastic is a bit of a pain to cut. I'm not going to lie, guys. And and because of that fact, now stuck to my finger again. And because uh, it is a little bit of a pain uh, to cut, you may find yourself having some problems. So there's my board. And I've just stuck them down. Now you'll see some of these 
are only kind of like half some are sort of look like they almost been cut in half okay that's not a problem okay and and particularly these ones that perhaps shatter they kind of go off at an angle that doesn't matter because what we can do is when we put the stippling down it'll actually cover some bits of it and leave other bits of the mine exposed so it looks like almost there's been a buildup of sand or maybe uh, part of the sand's fallen away underneath and the mine has instead of being horizontal it's just dropped slightly and so you get a little bit sticking out and the rest is kind of covered over with sand and I think that's going to look absolutely great so let's just go through um, kind of a sprue here's one that I started or oh, nearly finished off the other day um, I'm, I'm a bit of a hoarder in the sense that um, I generally keep just about everything I can so all these bits of sprue that I cut off I'm going to keep those. The reason for that is they look great as rubble. Um, you can paint them. So, guys, don't forget not to throw these away unless you really want to. But I'm going to keep mine. Uh, I'm going to use them maybe as rubble, but I've also got some ideas for a future uh, bit of terrain for the desert using those, uh, and I will be holding on to them. So, uh, so yeah, so we've, we've cut out this small piece. I don't know if you can just see it. It's basically the, one of the round sections. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start pretty low down because I found that uh, if you start too high, it shears off very easily. Not that it shearing off is a huge problem because, as I said, it can be a, a mine that's getting slightly uncovered. Seeing that that's started to split a little bit. You can see that white line down the middle of it. That's where it's starting to split. So at this point, I'm going to step back and I'm going to come at it from the other side. Very sneaky, I know. Again, starting cutting low, and I found if you cut a little bit by little bit, you're less likely to make it sheer. And there we have it. I've actually, on camera, successfully managed to cut one out. Now I'm just throw that spare bit away. And then, oh, I don't know how I'm going to get this shown to you, but there we go. There it is. It's quite small, it's quite fiddly. All right, but I can start laying out my third line. Now, I I put five in a line. If I just hold up the board and show you. Have five in a line. You can do any formation you want, and I, I tend to stagger them. So I have one, two, three, four, and five. And then I have my next line. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to do a third line here, staggering them um, and doing that. So I'm going to glue this on, I'm going to cut up a few more bits, um, the Perry's ones actually look a little bit bigger, uh, no, no puns intended, but um, so I may use a few of these as well just to make it you know, a little bit different, kind of scatter it out, uh, change it up. I'm going to do that, I'll do a quick time lapse video and then uh, we'll come back and we'll look at stippling. So, see you in a sec. Okay guys, so uh, I've cut out the rest and I've stuck, <coughs> excuse me, um, I've stuck down the rest. The Perry's one's actually cut pretty nicely. Um, I did wonder whether I could maybe get two out of them, but uh, by the time I cut it, it, it wasn't working. So yeah, they're pretty nice, uh, easy to cut. Um, I, I should say, don't forget when you're cutting to get the flat edge of the cutters um, towards the top that you want to keep. Uh, otherwise, you, you get it as a, a crimped version, okay? Um, so, that's that. Uh, super glue has taken seconds to dry, which is great. And we're ready to move on to our stippling, okay? Um, so, obviously, taking the, the uh, inch and a half brush, we're just going to open up our, our tub of polyfiller. Uh, and obviously, if you, you're making your own, that's fine. Mine comes pre-mixed, all right, pre-made. Um, there is a little bit of water in there, which I'm going to have to sort out. Um, but yeah, it's really simple. You just get it on the end of your brush and start stippling. And what we're looking for is um, a real stippling effect to make kind of the, 
the look of the sand in the desert. And it doesn't matter if you guys go a little bit over the mines. You can always, uh, I say mines in inverted commas, uh, you can always uh, just wipe it off with the top of your finger so that uh, some of it's covered, uh, but not all of it. And that will give us the ability to um, paint over the top of them a little bit later on. So uh, I'm gonna carry on with this. In fact, it's hardly gonna take me very long at all. Um, once once you've stippled these, um, I, th I think I left mine 24 hours yesterday and that was plenty of time. It was probably ready in six or eight hours, um, whatever. You, your whatever the tub says drying time I would suggest that um, depends how hot the temperature is in your, in your house if you're leaving it in your house or if you're outside I know out in cold weather it takes a little bit longer to dry uh, than when it's warm um, so yeah but as you can see we're stippling it we're starting to get a, a, a real kind of um, textured effect to it so um, yeah, as I say, and, it, and as I say, just go over the mines um, because we can come back and we can just wipe off the excess a little bit, just get a little bit sh of it showing. Um, I think it's gonna. It looks really good when it's dry, um, and it takes maybe I don't know. I think the one I did the other day took me maybe five minutes to stipple it, if that. Um, it, it's such an easy process and it's so much quicker in the drying process than the sand uh, that I used for the scatter terrain. So really, you know, if, if you can go to B&Q or home base or, or anywhere that does, um, you know, pre-made uh, polyfiller, it's well worth picking it up. Um, I use it so often in terrain and it really does not take very long at all to dry. Oh, yeah, Hirsch. Sorry, my dog has just come to tell me something. It's probably that she wants to go out, so I'm probably gonna have to take a break in just a second. Uh, but let me just finish this up because it really does not take very long. I just wanna show you guys. And I, all I am doing is stabbing at it. That's all I'm doing with it, stabbing at it with a brush getting that textured effect because what happens is when you lift that br brush off oh, I'm throwing stuff up when you lift that brush off what it does is it drags some of it up and it just lifts it up a little bit and gives it that texture that we're looking for so just final corner sometimes I like to get plenty on there so it gives it a good thickness other areas a little bit patchier maybe uh, but you can kind of go over it as and when all right, just pulling off some of the some of the filler that's got on some of these, just so they're obvious. I mean, I, I like having them some some of them really covered up. Um, I think it's great. So there we go. There's the whole thing. As I say, it's maybe a couple of minutes at tops. Um, make sure you wash your brush out, otherwise the filler will go hard and it will make your brush horrible. Um, but yeah, that's it drying. Um, I'm gonna just take out Hershey. Um, take her out to go potty and I will be right back uh, and I will show you what it looks like when it's dried okay so uh, see you in a second hi guys welcome back so um, it's been a few days actually I have to admit I've been very busy um, but even with that in mind these these only actually took a few hours to dry so we've got two now all dried, ready to go. Okay, um, they actually almost look like they're slightly different types of mines, which is great. I like that effect. I like that one field uh, or mine field has kind of got slightly bigger looking mines than the other one. So uh, we're going to paint this up now. Um, I'm going to use basically um, a main coat, and then I, which I'll be using the golden sunset, like I did for my scatter terrain from Apple Barrel. Um, and then to dry brush, we'll be putting this antique parchment on, uh, which again is from Apple Barrel. Um, these are good. They're, they're um, let me see, 59 milliliters. Uh, but at Walmart, if you're in the States, they're about 50 cents for a pot this size. And these actually do last quite a long time. 
it makes them ideal for terrain painting because uh, often in terrain painting we're using large you know, you know we're covering large areas with paint and and using Vallejo paints um, it, it gets expensive um, and, and you get through paint quite quickly uh, you know you could easily go through a, a pot of this in perhaps like a project for a hill or something so um, so yeah if you can get something like this these are really good so as per usual I'll be using my uh, my paint palette getting some paint down there and paint these it shouldn't take that long actually guys I'm, I'm actually really excited I, I was thinking earlier that the minefields themselves probably take about half an hour each not including drying time so that kind of gives you an idea of actually you know this project is not it's not all that difficult it's it's pretty quick and and that's what i'm trying to do these days is to get uh projects done much quicker so that they don't drag out now you can go ahead and paint the mines okay uh, don't you know don't feel like you have to go around them you can do if you like um i will be painting over the top of them again um so don't you know don't panic too much again you know the more water you add i'm really sorry about my arm going across it's just that my paint palette is over there yeah the more water you add you know you, it's it gets a thinner coat um it's more watered down it does spread easier actually um say that like that's a surprise i'm sure you guys know this by now and you probably don't even need to see me paint this but for those of you who do i'm going to do it anyway some of you even enjoy watching me paint so that's kind of weird my wife would uh, have to question you but that's all right that's that's a thing that we worry about yeah so very quickly what i'm going to do i'm going to finish up painting this um i'm going to finish up painting the base coat uh then what i'll do is let them dry and then we'll come back and we'll do a dry brush over the uh whole thing and then we'll talk about painting the mines themselves um and and just some extra finishing touches as well that we could do to the base um and then kind of after that then that's it we're pretty much done so i'm going to finish this up and I will see you in a second. Hey guys, so we're back. Uh, so painting them up, they look starting to look pretty good. They will dry. Um, I need to dry it a little bit. It should take maybe maybe ten minutes to dry. I think um, it, th this paint is pretty quick when it dries, so that's good. Um, I do need to paint the edges of the boards. Uh, that shouldn't take me long. Um, and then once it's dry, I can highlight. Now, uh, it's exactly uh, the same technique as we used for the scatter terrain. Uh, get a little bit of paint on your brush, dry it off on, on a paper towel or something or a bit of newspaper, and then very lightly just kind of go backwards and forwards and you're picking out those uh, high points. Um, so I'm going to go away and do that. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'll probably do it actually as a, uh, a time lapse thing, and then uh, we'll go. We'll come back and uh, we'll have a look at um, painting the mines and, and adding some finishing touches to it. So um, that being said, we'll see you in a sec. Okay, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, it was just the postman, apparently. So there we go. Anyway, let's move on. So I, I painted these up. Uh, just giving a little bit on top. We're going to do a lot to cover them up now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my uh, glue, PVA and water mixture 50-50 that I made up um, the other day. And we're just going to blend these in. So what I'm going to look to do, uh, I'm going to get my sand. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some uh, PVA. I'm just going to kind of splash it on around the outside of the mine. I'm, I'm not going on top, I'm just going around the outside, that surrounding area. And then what I can do, grabbing my sand. Okay, grab the sand, get a little pinch, sprinkle it about, 
tap it off, and we get sand, and we start to uh, blend it in a lot more. You, you can't really see the sides too much, which is what I'm going for. Okay, so I'm going to finish up these two. I'm going to do that. Um, again, you could do this before the painting stage if you wanted, um, so that uh, essentially you painted over this sand. You could do that. Um, you could even build it up with filler as you're stippling it. Um, it's up to you. And some, some that perhaps have bent in half a little bit, you could put a little bit of sand over the middle. Okay, it's really up to you guys. So, I'm going to crack on with this. We'll do a quick um, timing uh, uh, elapse, something like that. A quick, quick video. Right, we'll see you in a sec. So we're back and we have a completed minefield. Now, it might be guys that you don't like that look. It might be that you don't want to put the sand on, you just want to leave it like this. That works perfectly fine. Um, looking at now, I can see the advantages and disadvantages to both of them. Um, this one kind of, I think I might want to go over and paint these again. Uh, rather than just leave it as sand. Um, but it does almost look like it's freshly dug, uh, whereas this one blends in much more. Maybe it's been there a little bit longer. So I think I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna actually do two like this. I'll do the third one like this as well. I'm gonna leave this one like this, so it's freshly dug. So I've got a contrast on the table. Um, I could add to this, I could add signs if I wanted, little mine signs, but to be honest, if you put mines down, you don't want to leave a sign for the enemy. It just kind of, you know, does, avoids them actually being useful. Um, you could add barbed wire, bits of barbed wire, broken bits of barbed wire, bit, um, bits of broken vehicles you could add. Um, you could add, if you've got uh, arms left over from sprues, or legs you could have those lying around if you wanted to go a little bit more gory like somebody had already set one off um, you could leave um, uh, an area where mine was maybe on the edge here and just make it almost look like a crater like there'd been an explosion so there's all sorts of things you can do guys uh, with these and really kind of go to town and do what you fancy um, at the end of the day it's your terrain um, and these are just all suggestions. These are the ways I've found to do it. Um, they are pretty quick, to be honest. Um, I, I've had to wait, you know, cut some time um, to let things dry. But to be fair, I've been so busy that actually um, I've been getting on with other things anyway. So uh, the drying time hasn't really been an issue. So there you go. Um, there's the minefields. Uh, if you've liked this video, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel, um, and we'll see you in another episode of Operation Sand Dune or any of the others um, sometime soon. So, until then, take care, have a great day.